Hi, and welcome to the Growth Fanatic Podcast. I'm your host, Darren Graham, and today we are joined by Michelle and Christy Newham from Right on Time. They are a PR agency that helps businesses grow and thrive through positive media. So, Michelle, Christy, and welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Thank right. you. Thank you very much, Darren. Great yeah. to be here. Thank it's you. It's so nice to be here. We're doing really well. We're excited to talk to you. No, thanks a lot for coming on. For everyone that doesn't know it, doesn't know, I messed up yesterday and we were meant to record this yesterday. Whatever happened, I don't know. But thank God they've um, rescheduled and we're, we're doing it today. So I appreciate you doing that for us. Not pleasure. a problem. It's a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, so yeah, we've we've got Michelle and Kristen on the podcast today to talk about them and their business and how they use storytelling to help promote other businesses as well. So for everyone that doesn't know, you can you tell us a little bit about yourself, about the business and kind of what you do and how you help um, your clients? Sure. Absolutely. So kick off, yeah. Yeah, can, why not? <laughs> I, I can riff on, on you, yeah. yeah. All good. So Go we're um, a husband and wife team and we actually met whilst we were working as a local news reporters way back in the early noughties. Yeah. Um, and we met and fell in love like Lois and Clark in the, <laughs> in the newsroom. We did. <laughs> and we kind of... Yeah, the Warrington Guardian was our Daily Planet. Yeah, yeah Warrington yeah, Guardian, yeah. Daily Planet. Yeah, yeah. And um, we kind of both went on a trajectory of continuing to work for local, regional and national newspapers. And then we crossed the line. We mm. moved into PR and um, Christian was in the private sector and I was in the public sector with the NHS. Okay. And we kind of saw um, things from the opposite side of the fence. So we had been the people kind of telling the stories and doing the doing for yeah. the paper. Contacting the press offices of companies to get the news. And then we became the press officers then, didn't we? We did, so we, we yeah. were telling the, the reporters what they needed. So it was Gosh. very much two sides of, of the coin, wasn't it? It was, yes. Yeah. So we kind of had um, a, unique, a unique insight because we had worked as reporters. We knew the kind of stories they liked sort of uh, narratives they like to follow um, and we did that really successfully for several years and then we've kind of come full circle yeah. and we're now working together and um, running our own PR consultancy agency so all that learning so combined 30 years yeah between us yeah not each no no <laughs> not Benjamin Button <laughs> no 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 we're not that old yet but no we've got combined experience of 30 years between the two of us yeah yeah, yeah. so we thought what can we do how yeah. can we utilize all this knowledge how can we help business owners yeah. and we decided yeah. to kind of give them an insight into the types of stories that journalists are looking for and how they can use this as an opportunity mm. to get valuable publicity for their business get seen by thousands of potential customers mm. and do this all without spending any money on advertising just purely from having a genuinely interesting news where these stories tell. Yeah, the you know trusted and credible news outlets are prepared to to publish because it's of interest to their readership. So that that's the uh, secret behind it, as it were, of, of the formula that we've we've come up with. Yeah, yeah, that sounds brilliant. It sounds like you've got a really good, you like to say, unique aspect. The fact you've been on both sides of the coin and you know exactly Indeed. what each side wants. So that makes yeah. a massive difference. I can I can imagine. Um, you mentioned obviously telling a the story there. Um, I think it's something that a lot of businesses need to do more of. Um, we, we, when we speak to clients, we kind of try and, and sort of impress on them the importance of storytelling. Because I think, especially from a social media point of view, it's probably more important than it's ever been to, to, yeah. to tell the story of a, of a business and kind of differentiate yours from everyone else's. So, I mean, how can businesses make use of storytelling so a lot of businesses might you know just you know what storytelling i'm not clear what you're on about what can they do or how can they make use of storytelling to sort of you know improve the business move the needle so that's that's a really great question yeah. and what it comes down to is people buy from people yeah. so people um, when they're faced with a sea of opportunities and decisions to make, they naturally gravitate towards people that they identify with on a, a values basis. They get the big why behind your business. They know what your purpose is. And that comes from actually lifting the veil and showing um, the humanity behind your business. So it becomes less of just a 
faceless corporate entity. It's actually a business owner um, or a team that they can connect with on an emotional level. And you're absolutely right. That's so important in social media to put yourself at the front of the business. And that's the bit that's actually going to be the most of interest to newspapers as well. So yes, because it's because it will be unique to you. You know, we all have our own our own selling point, which is, you know, there is only you in the world. You know, there isn't another you. So whatever you're doing, there might be people that are in the same industry or sector as you. But they won't be you. They won't have your values. They won't have your experience. They won't have your outlook. So it's all about identifying um, what is already there, and that's what we help with, isn't it? In seeing that the stories that are already um, yeah. existing within within your company or your business offering. So you can kind of get a little bit story blind. Yeah, like so, yeah. you very much show up, do what you need to do on a daily basis, yeah. and then go yeah. home. And what feels very ordinary, very unremarkable to you could actually be hugely interesting to somebody else who's got a different uh, life experience. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we tend to find yeah. that when we do a little bit of digging and we go back um, to, to the, the big why, the so why people formed their business in the first place, there's usually a really interesting story to tell behind that. Um, and that's one of the top ways we recommend in, to uh, get your story out to the press is telling your founder story, talking about your big why, um, and just using storytelling as an opportunity to really connect with potential customers and also to form lasting, trusted relationships with the journalists That's really important. Who, who are wanting to help you get your story out there. Yeah. So do you find then that you have a, a, a business that has a, has a particular story and there might be a particular journalist that, would, would like that over others either based on just their them or their their readership is, is that more the readership more than their um sort of wants basically so it's from what you're saying is you you can identify which publications are going to pick up on that story better than others as well yeah um well there's different types of stories that you can tell so uh, th there was a survey that I think it was the European Consumer Survey that showed 50% of people still like to shop local. They still know and trust their local brands. So the local newspaper is a really, really good starting point for any business because people are always in your community are going to be that much more engaged and interested in what you do. Yes. So for a yeah. local newspaper, lots and lots of different types of stories work for them. Okay. However, okay. if you are trying to set yourself up as a thought leader or really show your specialism and expertise, then you might want to look at telling your story in a dedicated publication that serves specifically your industry. Okay. So yeah. especially if, like, for example, you happen to be a business coach and you're trying to show some trusted authority or credibility to your potential clients than being published in a, a, a magazine that's purely dedicated yeah. to coaching will really help to build up your credibility. So that I would say those are the two main areas to look at. So generalized news um, publications, be it local, regional or national, and then those very niche publications that are more relevant to the sector that you're trying to sell products and services to. Yeah, you can you find with the niche publications that you can start getting more into the kind of the the what and how things you know work within that particular offering. Whereas I think with the local newspaper and the readership there, they're more interested about learning about somebody from their local area who is in some way you know doing something that's either booking the trend or they're starting out in a new venture because uh, you know. As, as, as uh, you know, human beings, we are a very curious, inquisitive breed of, you know, that, that's the species, you know, that's what we are. We like to find out what, you know, a person in, in the town over from where we live or in the local area, what they're up to. Yeah. So yes. local reporters do, do love to find out about how people from their immediate vicinity, from their readership, is doing something that is going to connect with their audience because it's going to be of interest to those people to see, oh, well, X is up to that at the moment. And it'll make a great story. So it's, it's all about, as Michelle said, it's kind of having that, that confidence to know where you can go into certain areas with how you tell your story 
and how that will then benefit the the um, platform or the the issue or publication that you're going to be featured in. That's really clever. That's really yeah. clever. yeah, really interesting. So, could you essentially have if if you're working with a business? would you sort of try and tease out sort of different stories for different angles and then by the sound of it kind of layer that up depending on which publication you go into so there might be some localized stories and then some absolutely stories. absolutely, absolutely. yeah that, that, that's so, that's pretty much how it works yeah you yeah. do you want to start with elaborating on that Michelle, so yeah i can give an example yeah. of a startup entrepreneur that we've worked with yeah. for several years um, she invented a mat to help weaning babies so the mat yeah. sticks to the table and they can't throw the food on the floor. It's a silicon ah. suction plate. Ah. Yeah. Like a yeah. silicon yeah. suction plate. Which I'm sure all parents can relate immediately yeah. to that in terms of, you know, when your baby's going through the weaning process and throwing food everywhere and, the you know, yeah. the spoon and the, the plate goes flying. Well, she, yeah. she came up with a solution yeah. and she very bravely went to Hong Kong on her own found a manufacturer over there to, to, to create yeah. this plate. And then she launched her the product through Amazon and be, quickly became an Amazon bestseller. Got all the patents and everything sorted so, out, the whole thing, wasn't it? All sorted yeah. out from the beginning. Yeah. So that was a fantastic kind of startup yeah. entrepreneur story. So we kind of looked at the, um, the storytelling aspects from a, a number of perspectives. So yeah. we started off telling her story as a local businesswoman doing good, and that yeah. went into the local paper. Which she'd never been in before. Never. That that was one of her ambitions. It was to get, I want to get some coverage. I want to be in the local newspaper. Yeah. So that was step one. That yeah. was step one. Yeah. So as a result of appearing in the local newspaper, a television production company in London spotted the coverage and invited her to audition for a brand new television show in the style of Dragon's Den. That's right, yeah. Which, which uh, she went on and won, and she won several high-value uh, high contra uh, contracts as a result of that. Oh, wow. Then her, um, her products appeared on This Morning. Yeah. Um, they were, Holly and Phil had them on a show about a, a segment about weaning. And then because of the coverage oh. off the back of that, it was spotted in the regional press and she was invited to be a speaker at a regional business conference, which wow. is another wow. opportunity that came from that. And then all this coverage she used as supporting evidence to apply for a number of industry awards and she and she won those too. Yeah, and it created social media content as well. It yeah. did. And, yeah. then, and then the final piece of the puzzle was she wanted to start getting more contracts from stockies and distributors. So she started telling her story in industry publications, serving that specific sector. And as a result of that, she got interest from the likes of IKEA and other major brands who, who wanted to pick the product up. Yeah. So at a lo local, regional, national level, the story wasn't changing. Yeah. It was just yeah. being presented in a different way. Yeah, it was just the emphasis was being tweaked a little bit. So obviously for the for the local newspaper, that was very much more about, well, whereabouts in the area do you live? You know, where did you go to school? You know, yeah. all that type of thing. But then, as Michelle mentioned, when she you're starting to then be featured in trade publications and different things that are more niche, that's when you can start getting into more about the actual product itself that has been created. Because for that readership, with all due respect, whilst it's nice for them to know whereabouts in the country you're from, that isn't the main thrust of that particular piece. It's more about yeah. what you're doing to be an industry leader or to be a bit of a game changer. Whereas for the newspaper, that it's nice to know that you're doing the industry side of it and leading, but they're, they're more interested in knowing you know, whereabouts you're from and that, that type of thing. So it is an interesting dynamic how it works in terms yeah. of just tweaking it for that desired audience to give them what they want and what they can draw from it. So it's the same story. Same story, in different, different ways, ways basically, uh, in a nutshell, uh, uh, yeah. So, so obviously a, a very in-depth strategy behind something like this. So which is kind of leading on to my next question, which was how can businesses kind of use the PR and storytelling to kind of move the needle? But it sounds like there's you putting a strategy into that to be able to to do that so kind of what would it look like for like a a startup like that or, or an established business kind of what would the without giving away the secret sauce obviously um no, what no, would no, the no. process be for like right this is 
just so I can, just so people that are listening can kind of understand how how it would work in their sort of situation. Absolutely, Absolutely. yeah, because we don't yeah. just want to sort of give like theory. I mean, you know, in terms of you know, we can definitely give tangible examples of things that people can think about. So yeah, yeah so, let, let's go with let, let's go with the startup then. As Darren suggested, we can do we'll we'll, we'll do that one. That so sounds great. Yeah, we always recommend that a simple, achievable, and measurable goal for any business owner, a real starting point as you were is to yeah. set yourself yeah. the target of getting in your local newspaper okay. so that again yeah. just to repeat that is something that's simple achievable and measurable so whatever sector you're in whatever your audience base this is something that you can aim for just to start your PR journey yeah. and even if you've yeah. been in there before you know do it again because it is important to build up that relationship as we mentioned earlier with the local with your local press Got so we would always right. actively encourage that for any startup to make getting into the local newspaper as, as one of your key your, your key sort of milestones as it were so there are lots of kind of standard story ideas or narratives that tend to work well for the local press so what myself and christian have done is bring 20 ideas together in a single free document called 20 ways to get your business into your local newspaper okay. so i will uh, share a link yeah. with you uh, for that with you darren yeah. welcome to share it with, with your listeners yeah. that's a free resource yeah it's totally free so these are 20 story ideas that apply to any business that you can use to really get the old brain cells going and thinking what story can yeah. i tell about my business yeah it's designed to put you in that mindset that you know to get you thinking in a different way about what is already going on or has maybe happened in your own business yeah just to, as michelle said get get those juices flowing about how we can then start to tell a story yeah, yeah. i'll just give you a really quick example um we, we were chatting to um, a lady who is a Zen drummer, so she That's teaches. That's what she does now. She's a Zen, Zen drummer now. Drumming classes. Yes, That's what she does now. Yeah, <laughs> which is so cool. Which is fantastic. It's yeah. really cool. And we, she's like, "There's no story about my business." So we were like, "Well, what did you used to do?" Because this is a really uh, tried and tested story idea that works for lots of people. Yeah. What did you used to do versus what do you do now? And we call that our X turned X formula. Okay. And it turned okay. out when we were chatting to her, she used to be on a murder detective squad. Yes. So, <laughs> so. And she said very, very, <laughs> she said very, very innocently then to us both, do you think that would be of interest? Though? And we were like, I yes. Be, I used to be a murder detective <laughs> that has now become a Zen drummer. And it was like, it's massively interesting. But it just goes to show you what we were saying before, that people, you know, we, we encounter that quite a lot. I think people just see what they have done and what they go on to do as being just something that they do. Whereas for us three there now just talking about that, that's a really interesting journey already yeah. before you've even yeah. started to put sort of the meat on the bones of why, you know, what happened? Why did she go from doing something in, in one very specific area like that, working, you know, within the police force to now doing a very, very different thing altogether. And already that, that's going to intrigue people and they're going to want to know Right. Yeah. How on earth do you go from being a murder detective to a Zen drummer? So when so when that light bulb went off for us, she was like, I get it. Yeah, Yeah. I see what you mean. I can start to work with that. So that's one of our twenty, isn't it? An X to X approach. And then another kind of teaching that we always try to impart is the story that could be published at any time is often published at no time. Yeah. So timeliness is really, really important. So we always recommend that you try and link your story to either something that's happening in the national news or the local regional news, or it's linked with something like a National Awareness Day. So, um, for example, the uh, coming up very soon, the 18th of May is the start of Mental Health Awareness Week. So um, that's a really good opportunity to think to yourself, how does my business improve the mental well-being of the customers I serve so even if you work in something like I I spoke to a lady today and she was like I'm a corporate tax relief person there is nothing interesting about that but at the end of the day finances can have a huge impact on on, on mental well-being anxiety stress everything depression so my challenge to her was how can you position yourself 
yourself that you are actually helping people to enjoy better mental well-being by taking charge of their tax situation and their finances. Now talk about that in the context of Mental Health Awareness Week and you're giving a signal to the reporter, now is the time to publish this story. It's relevant for this specific reason and I've got a credible expert who can give me some really interesting insights that will be of interest to our readers. So you can kind of see how everything starts to piece together and even if you think you work in the driest, mm. most boring industry yeah. available, the key is linking it back to people. How do you help people? How do you make their lives easier, better, more comfortable, improve their mental health and well-being, perhaps physical health, and really focus on the human aspect of what you do and tell that story? Yeah. Because when you're pitching your story to reporters, this is something else that myself and Michelle explain to a lot of people, is that reporters are human beings as well. So yeah. they've got all the same concerns and emotions and things going on in their life that they can relate to just as, just as the next person can. So I think what's important is that people don't think of the media or the press as like a collective, as like this entity. Yeah. That, you know, yeah. they're in some ivory tower, they're, they're, they're unapproachable, you know, you can't reach out to them. Because these are people as well. So if they see something coming coming across their news their news desk that has got something in there, as Michelle said, that is tangible, it's current, it's relevant, it tells a story, it opens up a wider conversation with with their readership, then the chances are of it being converted into as to be used as a story is very very high indeed. Because you're giving the reporter what they want, yeah. and another yeah. thing is that reporters yeah. are always crying out for news stories. They are, and what how this helps as well is it reduces your marketing spend because what we're not talking about is buying an advert in mm. a newspaper yeah. we're telling yeah. you that you can get this coverage completely for free so there's no money involved this is a free shop window for your business if you can just get comfortable with telling your story yeah lifting the veil a little bit as we mentioned at the, at the start of the chat you know you need to do that to some extent so there is a little bit of confidence involved in there as well but once you get into that framework, and I think that's where the 20 ideas comes into it, I think once people start to look at that and, and see where the ideas can form from, that already begins to instill confidence because you've got a starting point that maybe you didn't have before. So yeah, so it's, it's, I suppose it's like sort of like a mental partnership of businesses and sort of thing. Definitely, yeah. Like who, who will be interested in this story now or... How does, how does my business relate to this? I suppose there could be loads of different elements. Like um, I always remember going to one um, award show where the inter where the guest speaker was the owner of Timpsons, the um, yeah. cobblers. Um, and what they were doing is, I think they, they employed one of the largest um, amounts of ex-cons. So people that were in prison that due to leave would get interviewed, yeah. would become... So I suppose if you're in that situation, that's just one element of your store, one element of your business that could be a, a massive story, depending 100%. on the you or whatever. So that's really interesting for businesses um, to start thinking about. Well, but what an amazing approach as well to have with that, you know, for a business to make that like the ethos of what they do and what they yeah. believe in, you know, that shows a, 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 for me a very, a very values driven. Like a heart led business. A heart led business, yeah. absolutely. So yeah. what, why not talk about that? You know, why not? link that into it again, link that into a wider or, or a relevant conversation. Um, what I would say about that as well, Darren, is you've just proved the point that we're making because like you said, I went to an awards ceremony and I remember that Timpsons yeah. spoke yeah. about the fact they employ ex-prisoners. Yeah. So you've remembered the story that that yeah. person stood yeah. up and tell. You've not told me you remember that they cobble a million pairs of shoes a month or they use shoe leather from Prague or anything like that. Right. The thing that resonated with you is that they have a, um, an exciting recruitment policy that gives people an opportunity to start again after yeah. they've served a prison sentence. So yeah, that's definitely. the story. Yeah. No, it's really interesting. Fantastic. I'm delighted you brought that example up, Darren. That's a really strong example. Yeah. I wasn't aware of that. 
So I think yeah, that, that I mean, is a fantastic I mean, thing that they're yeah. doing. There was obviously a lot of jokes with ex-cons and cutting keys and stuff that he did. So that, yeah. that was quite good <laughs> as well. But yeah, it, it, yeah. It, was the, it, was, it was the fact that it was such a weird story because it was literally the first, you could see everyone thinking that they cut keys and they're ex-cons. And then that, he, <laughs> so he sort of led into that and he said, yeah. basically the moral of that story that he was telling was they're, they're some of our best employees. The fact that we've given them a second chance, they will work from six in the morning till eight at night without quibble. And then they were doing day release. So they would come and open up the shop, work, close the shop, hand the keys in, and then go back to prison, sleep at prison, come out and do that again. Yeah. So that, that's, it was really interesting to hear that sort of thing. But like I say, it was the fact that it's, it's a story and that's, yeah, and look at the level of detail that you record that presentation mm. in. How many conversations have you had since that award ceremony? Yeah, with and all you, respect, and, yeah. and you can still sit here months and months later and tell me in a really articulate way the story of how Timpsons do business. And that's what every business owner should be doing. There is always, always a story of interest to tell in your business. It's just a case of finding the one that connects with you and connects with your customers. Yeah, that's 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 an absolute really good point you mentioned that. So storytelling is essential. We've just we've just seen how well it helps people remember and you know instill the brand in the business. If you could only give if you could only give a business three tips to to take away from, from this particular podcast, what what would those three main tips be? Okay, so number one, I would say do the mindset work. Definitely, yeah. So look at what is a barrier to you implementing a storytelling strategy in your business. Is it that you don't want to blow your own trumpet? Is it you just don't know on a practical level how to get started? look at whatever it is that is preventing you from implementing storytelling as a free way to enhance your business reputation. So it might take you a little bit of time to do that. It's not an overnight thing. No. Not everyone yeah. feels comfortable, confident with the idea of being in print or online. And we totally get that. We, we completely do. get it. Yeah. But all we would say is the rewards for overcoming those mental blocks are absolutely huge if you can get yourself into that mindset. And of all the other marketing suggestions that will come your way in business, how many of them are completely free? How many of them can get you in front of thousands of people without spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds on advertising. So the rewards are there, but you need to do the mindset work to start with. So that's definitely number one yeah, number for us. One. Yeah. So number two, I would say make friends with your local newspaper. Now, it's really easy to do this. Um, you can start very simply by buying a copy. We have huge advocates that we say a good story, you shouldn't have to buy an advert but a good newspaper deserves being bought. Absolutely, it does. They can't run, you know, on fresh air. They do need some support from the business community. So make sure you buy your local newspaper, study it, see what kind of stories are being printed on the business pages, and look up the names of the reporters, find them on Twitter, find them on LinkedIn, like and share some of their content and do some legwork to building really positive relationships with these reporters. Because we all live in a two-way society, so if you yeah. want something yeah. from them, you need to give something of yourself. And whether that's just championing or cheerleading the paper, if like our newspaper at the moment is running a campaign called uh, Heroes of Warrington. So these are key workers who are helping to keep the town running throughout the pandemic. So I will routinely re repost, yeah, share yeah. their content, just keeping yourself visible, keeping yourself supportive. So when your story does come across the news desk, you're not an alien person to them. You are someone who's shown that you want to support them as well. So I definitely would um, consider really trying to work on those relationships. And number three, is very much starting to think about what stories exist within your business. So 
the document we've created absolutely free of charge that can help you to get into that mindset and really start trying to look around you and think what can I talk about in relation to, to your business and each one of those story ideas they could be the title for a blog post yep. they could be a social yeah. media post yeah. they could be yeah. the basis for an award entry it's not just press it's thinking about everything integrated overall as a complete marketing strategy yeah you need to look at it as an overall you know a catch-all brand for you rather than just thinking about you know obviously the media side of it's hugely important but then it can be repurposed in other ways as well and then when you start to build up some some exposure in the press you know when you when you get that amazing feeling of um cutting out your clippings you know keeping your pieces that you get that all becomes social proof because it's validation from an external source that people you know that a publication has featured you because you're of interest to the to their readership and then that all becomes part of your social media strategy because you can talk about it online you know look where i appeared today in this publication so it kind of like it kind of creates almost like a pipeline, doesn't it, for things which can follow on and yeah, then you just have to keep that momentum integrated. going. Yeah, it's all integrated. And then you just keep moving in that direction. Yeah. That sounds absolutely good. Uh, three brilliant tips there for that alone. So um, you've also mentioned that you're um, introducing some more sort of online training of late as well. That's right, yeah. yeah. Do you want to tell us a bit about how that works and, and what, what's involved with that? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So... Myself and Christian, we've kind of bundled up all our 30 years combined experience and created what we call the toolkit. So this is um, a, a simple press pack yeah. with all the guidance, hints and tips you need to start pitching your story to the press. Okay. So that's everything wow. from templates to a script. So if you want something to hand when you're telephoning a reporter and you're a bit worried about what to say. Yeah, if you get a bit tongue-tied or whatever. A little bit tongue-tied, yeah. you can look at that script to keep you on track. There's a template for a covering note for your um, press release that kind of helps you to uh, explain your story in a really simple way that's going to excite the reporter. Yeah, it's going to get their attention. Get their yeah. attention. We've got lots of information there on how you can take photos that are suitable for the press using an, um, either an Android phone or iOS. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a big state-of-the-art camera or anything like that. Nothing just like that. Just tips on what reporters are looking for within the photograph. Um, yeah. And then there's uh, tips on etiquette, so yeah. how to um, speak to a reporter, how to follow up with them in a way that's going to make them happy and you're not going to get under their skin. Um, and we've also got a bonus document in there that's five ways to get more eyes on your business right now. And these are just like PR tips yeah. that yeah. We, we have um, practiced ourselves over our, throughout our whole career. They're just ways of really getting your business out in a really visible way for minimum spend yeah. so that's all bundled together in our press pack um, it's launch week at the moment until tomorrow so the price is 49 pounds and then after tomorrow it's, it's 90, uh, 99 pounds yeah so it's uh, until friday it is yeah yeah it's friday so it's oh. on wednesday today yeah so it's available oh sorry friday, friday. Yeah. Uh, getting my days mixed yeah, up in yeah. lockdown no no it's no <laughs> just, just want to make it clear it, it is until friday yeah um and another thing as well that i want to mention about the press pack um is that we appreciate that um some people a lot of people like to learn in, in an audio visual way as well yeah. so what myself yes. and michelle have done is we've taken the time to create a video um which which is also in the pack whereby we talk about various elements of what's included in the text just to give you that extra um, way of you know yeah. absorbing the information taking it on board and almost using it as a reference point to what we've already put into the pack itself yeah so as long as all the written information you've got a video alongside it as well to and help you the, with the, uh, the video walks you through step by step yeah. how to write a press release and it's yeah. literally in your first sentence say this in your second sentence yeah. say this so it's kind of like you know if you've never ever written a press release before it's just very simple user-friendly guide to how you go about doing that we've broken it down in that way because we, we want it to be accessible to people who have never done it before yeah. but it's also yeah. because we know that it's a method that works you know it's it's bread and butter for us it's what we've done for many many years we know that there is a very very specific structure that is a successful formula so even for people who may be looking at the park who have had a little bit of coverage 
that this is a, a, a formula, as it were, that's been taken directly from the newsroom, from the press office, from all those years of experience that we've got. And then we've, we've condensed it into this really, really efficient pack, whereby, as Michelle said, it does hand, hand hold you through, that, but in a feel supported rather than feeling like um, almost sort of you know, like information, yeah, overload. information overload. Yeah. It's not like that. It's yeah. You want it to be simple. And not only that, once you've got it in there, in the toolkit, you can refer to it time and time again yeah. as and when you have a story Every time you have a story, I just get your toolkit out, go through the same process, and, and honestly, it's yeah, going like, to 20 ideas as well. pay for itself so many times over, especially given uh, the average newspaper advert costs between three and £500. So if you think every time you have a story to tell, you've got a, a mechanism for telling it for free, it's just that that initial investment is just going to pay dividends over and over yeah. again. So the pack itself, just to quickly, um, as we said, it's available until this Friday, the 8th of May, at a 50% discounted rate of £49. So the RRP is, you know, it's 99 but until Friday, 8th of May, you can, you can get that. it for £49, that, that pack. Yeah. Um, and what we'll do for everyone watching the list is we'll have a link to that down in the show notes on the podcast and in the uh, description on YouTube as well. So you'll be able to click and go straight to there as well to make it easier. Thank you cool. so much. Um, so I think we're going to have to wrap up there now, but I could talk to you forever about this. It's, it's really interesting. Yeah, I'm so um, sorry. We get so excited talking <laughs> about being... stories that we never know when to start. Thank you for being so patient with your time, Darren. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If people want to get in touch with you, um, you know, yeah. speak to you directly, besides obviously going to the press park, what should they do? What sort of work, where, what's the best website? You know, where should they go? Sure. Well, yeah. well you can always find us on LinkedIn. Um, we are Michelle Ewan and Christian Ewan and our surname spell E W E N. Um, Slightly unusual spelling. Yeah, of Scottish Ewan. surname so, spelling. E W E N, not A N. So on there, yeah. what I'll do though, Darren, is I will send you all our social links, and you can link to them oh, in the broadcast. And oh, anyone who wants oh, to connect, we welcome them to come and say hi. Yeah. Perfect. That's great. Well, really appreciate you taking time out your day to come and share all that knowledge with us um so yeah so i think oh, everyone you. if you've not ever done this before and you think it's going to benefit the business i definitely would encourage you to go and check out the press pack um from christina michelle i think it's going to be a huge help but yeah again thank you very much and uh, thanks for joining us and everyone listening and watching i hope it's been really useful for you so yeah thanks a lot again christian thanks a lot michelle Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Oh, we loved it. Thank you so much, Darren. We were so appreciative to you. Thank you. No worries. Thanks a lot. Cheers.